Hello everyone and welcome back to the Ciphering Weather. In today's video we are tracking a strong tropical wave over Africa that according to the European model has a chance of developing into a potential tropical storm in about 7 to 10 days from now. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to tropicaltippets.com for Wednesday, July 24th, 2024. The red arrow is pointing towards a surge of tropical moisture that's being thrown towards the Gulf Coast of Texas and Louisiana. So we have a lot of flooding rains, especially in Houston. Then we have two tropical waves that we're monitoring in the main development region in purple. And we have one over Africa highlighted by black, which will be the focus of this video because this strong tropical wave has a chance based on the European model over the last two days now, showing potential development as it moves towards the Caribbean islands. Here's the vorticity signature of our two tropical waves in the main development region at the moment. You can see they are weak, nothing shown for possible development with those. And if we look at the Eastern Atlantic, we have our tropical wave that's southeast of the Cabo Verde Islands over the Atlantic right now and then the big tropical wave right behind it and there's another one right behind that and here is that tropical wave which has that big thunderstorm cluster right now over western Africa and this tropical wave like others this far out takes around 12 to 14 days to make its way to reach the United States well that potentially this is where it could end up in that time frame but right now, over the next seven days, the National Hurricane Center is not expecting any tropical development from this system. But if we look at the long-term forecast, Climate Prediction Center says we have a 20% chance at the end of July into August, which would be days 7 through uh, 13 and 14, where we have that 20% chance in the Western Caribbean for development towards the Bahamas and then the week after that more tropical waves could develop as well with a 20% chance reason being we have on the left side of your screen this rising air that's going to be setting up over Africa which is already starting to begin you can see the green here on the right side of your screen where I have these black boxes that is where we have our dry air in the Atlantic on the top right and then the top arrow is where we are now. The bottom arrow is August 1st. And you see the convectively coupled Kelvin wave going diagonal with time, intersecting with our rising motion over Africa around August 1st. And that's when we potentially could start to see the Atlantic come alive with development because we'll have rising air in the Atlantic to coincide with rising air with more tropical waves coming off the coast of Africa. And here's those tropical waves already starting to line themselves up one off the coast of Africa, one right behind it that we're going to monitor, and then three more behind that across the African Sahel. So, this is the European model, 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. Again, spin and energy in the atmosphere, about 1,000 to 5,000 feet up in the atmosphere. Here's the moisture content. You can see it's a lot, got a lot of thunderstorm and moisture with it. So it will have an initial big bubble to protect it from the Saharan air layer. Assuming we can have low wind shear right now, high wind shear is in front of it. So in two days time on Friday, July 26th is when we, it's expected to come off the African coast into the Atlantic basin. It will have its moisture bubble still somewhat intact. And you see the Saharan air layer, that brown, moving in towards the Eastern Caribbean at that time. And we start to see the beginnings of some lighter wind shear coming out of the north from this, with this tropical wave. That will be key for its potential survival of its moisture bubble. So now we move to day five, Monday, July 29th, next week. Black hexagon is our tropical wave we're monitoring. Purple is another one coming off the coast of Africa. And you can see our black one is maintaining some thunderstorm activity. Some moisture is still surviving and not a lot of dry air intrusion, but a lot of dry air intrusion with the wave behind it. 
and you can see the why. We have a lot of wind shear with the purple tropical wave behind it, not a lot with the one we're tracking in black. That's the key. Light wind shear allows it to maintain its moisture and not get destroyed from that Saharan air layer. Then by the time we get to a week from now, this is where things will start to get interesting. And we'll see if the National Hurricane Center starts to pick up on this in the next couple of days, because this is seven days out. Tropical Wave is just to outside the Caribbean islands now. You can see its moisture bubble is still intact, surrounded by the Saharan air layer of dry air. But you can see it's got a, a pocket of low wind shear environment. Why? Because we have overhead an upper level ridge, which is conducive for tropical development. Now, this is just one model run again on the European model. So this could be very different in another model run tomorrow. So if this is showing the true forecast of what could potentially be, this is one possible scenario. The upper level ridge will allow for tropical development to continue if it develops. And then we see a potential tropical storm moving through Turks and Caicos and Central Bahamas by the time we get to Saturday, August 3rd. And compared to yesterday, yesterday was about a 1,004 millibar uh, tropical storm. This one's stronger at a, at a 996 millibar. So each model run is showing a stronger and stronger storm. So it's something that we're going to have to prepare for and keep an eye on just in case. Especially because this Bermuda Azores High is going to be in place. It's not going out to sea. This one's coming westward, northwestward, towards the Caribbean islands, potentially the southeast coast of the United States, maybe into the Gulf of Mexico or around the east coast. So something definitely 10 days from now, we'll have to see if this is actually here or not, like the models are suggesting. If we look at the GFS model, that same tropical wave comes off the coast of Africa, but doesn't really get itself together because one, it doesn't develop that upper level ridge overhead and two, and two it because of that it doesn't maintain its moisture bubble to allow that convection to really get going and gets suppressed by the saharan air layer and you can see in a week's time the support on the european model is there for this tropical wave to start developing gfs echoes nothing and then when we get to 10 days from now, again, because it doesn't have that upper level ridge on the GFS, nothing there, versus the European model saying potentially something coming through the Caribbean islands, either skirting into the Caribbean on a path similar to Barrel to on the southern end of this range, to the northern end missing the islands, which would be best case scenario if it does develop, but the middle of the road shows them going through the northern portions of those islands. Puerto Rico, northern coast of Hispaniola, Bahamas, Turks and Caicos. All of you need to be watching this storm over the next week to see if it does develop. So we'll continue to monitor these two areas. The tropical waves behind it will potentially develop in the main development region later into August as the Atlantic becomes more favorable. Because even if this wave doesn't develop, I've seen it in the past since I've been doing this this channel since 2020. Because we have so much Saharan air and dry air in the Atlantic right now, even if this wave doesn't isn't the one that develops it, it be, makes the environment more conducive for development for the waves behind it. I've seen that on the European model many times where it's bullish on the first wave and then cuts back on it two, three days later, only to come back four or five days from then with another wave behind it showing its potential for developing. And then that's when the GFS climbs on board too. So even though the GFS is not showing it now and the Europeans bullish on this first wave, we'll hold off, potentially see this one, maybe not develop, but the ones behind it, as you saw, we have three more tropical waves behind this one that we're going to have to monitor as well. So the Atlantic's getting ready to get uh, going once more. As a reminder, we have super things available on deciphering weather. So if you'd like to donate to the channel, 
please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.